Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and if you need to do some emergency feeding, this is the fastest and probably the cheapest way out there. It works very well. Many, many beekeepers do this. It's been used for over 100 years in various forms, and it's just basically feeding dry sugar. And you can literally put it on your colonies in freezing temperatures, and if your bees need fed, you need to go in there and take care of it. Now, anyone that knows me knows that I recommend at the end of your fall flow, or even prior to the end of your fall flow, go, flow, go in there and check your colonies, see their store levels. Typically your little colonies, for whatever reason, maybe late splits, maybe late swarms that you, you had, or maybe some colonies that superseded, didn't have the forager population, so they weren't able to capitalize on that fall nectar, and they need a little help. Getting it to them as quickly as you can is the best way to do it. I prefer liquid feeding, and that's why we don't do very much of this type of feeding. But when you need to do this, this can literally save your colony. Many colonies starve after winter's over, pre-spring when they're brooding up really hard because the pollens are coming in, which stimulates the bees to raise a lot of brood. But if they don't have enough sugar syrup or honey to go through the winter, then they're going to starve to death and many times they're, they're large colonies that starve because they burn through so many resources. So this is a method you can just throw it on real quick right here. Now let's get into this hive. Got our insulated board here, probably overkill in Tennessee but hey it's not that expensive to do it and it works good. So we got our screen here to keep them from chewing on that. We've got our inner cover inverted, and there's our little cluster of bees. So we're going to smoke them down a little bit. They'll probably not want to go down in this cool weather. It's, uh, I think it was 47 or 48 today. <laughs> bees just don't want to move this time of the year. Let's see if we can get them down a little quicker. We got this feeder rim right here, and that's going to allow us to be able to feed a lot. Basically, when we get done with this colony, what we're fixing to do to it, we're going to be done with this one for till uh, they start brooding up really heavy, and they need more space probably around the uh, first week of March here. Get on down, B. So now what, one thing that I've done is I have spritzed this paper, just newspaper. Make sure you don't use any uh, pages that have political stuff on it because... There's already enough parasites in the hive as it is, you know. Ah, oh, sorry, I had to. All right, so we're just going to stick this down. Get those bees to smoke down a little bit more. Now, I have already spritzed this, but it's dried out a pretty good bit. Now, you can use water. What do I do with my spritzer? Thanks, Laurel. You can just use regular water. You just want to give it a little bit. This is really important because we don't want the sugar to stay broken up in little crystals. We want it to form a solid brick. So that moisture is really important. However, I've done one-to-one -one and used it in a bottle before, and that's great too because the bees are going to chew through that paper and get to this. Now, one thing you're going to want to do is make sure you score the paper. By the way, I did a video a while back, and... I use parchment paper. It, did, it does not work good on little colonies. It's just too hard for them to chew through. They do a very good job doing it and, and using it, I mean, when the weather is warm. But when the weather is cool, they're just not very active. So the, the paper is so much easier for them to go through. Plus, I think it soaks in the sugar. And so it's, it's very attractive to them because it's kind of a sweet thing to chew through but it's much softer so definitely use the newspaper the parchment will work on big colonies but if you're feeding a little colony that doesn't have a lot of bees to warm the cluster then i would definitely highly recommend using sugar so you just get you a couple slits like that and we've already spritzed it down and a little bit more smoke and we got the moisture underneath now you want to apply some moisture about every Oh, about every inch and a half, give or take. And you're like, oh my goodness, add moisture to the colony? What in the world are you doing, Cayman? Crazy stuff. Whoa. Get out of there, bees. There you go. All right. So that's a good bit for now. 
we're going to add a lot. You can add a whole lot to this. See what we have right here, though, the sugar that's wanting to go down between the frames? That's not what we want at all. The bees are just going to kick that out of the front of the hive. Now, some people are going to make sugar bricks and other things, but this works very good. And the nice thing about this is, is it soaks up moisture throughout your winter. So if the bees are putting off too much condensation or something else happens, this is going to absorb moisture for the colony and help keep them dry. A couple more spritz. And just level that out a little bit more. That's a lot of feed right there. And it's so cheap, you can get bags like this from Wally World for about 35 cents a pound, 38 cents a pound, I think, around here. Depends on where you're at. And make sure you give it a little bit of moisture. I know it seems like a lot of moisture. Oh my goodness, you're putting in the hive, Cayman. We've done this to so many colonies, and I know other people that do it a lot more than we do. This gives them a ton of food. This can literally mean the difference between your colony coming out of winter thriving or not even coming out of winter. It's very quick, very easy to do. Now all we've got to do is throw everything back together. So we're just going to check that on here, but just remember um, I did use the parchment. It did not work good on the little nukes. I've, I've used it on bigger colonies. A colony like this would probably handle it fine, but just remember those little three frame, four frame, five frame colonies just don't have the bee power. It's harder for them to generate the heat and you know, cool bees just aren't as active as warm bees. And this, uh, this right here is just gonna work really good. Now, you're probably wondering about my lid situation here. I've never seen anything like this before, probably for good reason. But you'll want to take some tar paper. Kids are on the trampoline over there. It's not like a bunch of coyotes. And take that parchment paper, not parchment, tar paper, and tape it on all four sides and keep that moisture from getting underneath any of those things. And that works really good here in mild Tennessee. Again, we're working up on Thanksgiving, and it's 49 degrees, 48, something like that. So this is just a quick way you can feed. There's other methods out there this one works very well. Very simple, very easy, and you can make your own feeder rim. This is a one and a half inch feeder rim. You can just throw one of those together with a bunch of scrap wood lying around the house. So thanks for watching our videos. If you have any comments or questions about this type of feeding, leave them below.